Welcome everyone to uh, this week's session of Etra University. We have a session specifically on meeting minutes. Um, Kyle Thompson, one of our project managers, is going to take us through meeting minutes and, and how to do them and why they're important. Um, no, this isn't about how to chair a meeting. We'll have a future session on effective ways of chairing a meeting, but it's specifically just about the minutes and how important they are. So Kyle, thank you for taking this on as our subject matter expert, and I'll look to you to guide us. Thanks, Corinna. Thanks, everyone, for jumping in this afternoon. Hope you're all doing well. As Corinna mentioned, just going to go over high level meeting minutes and a couple reasons why they're important and why we do them on a day to day basis. So, this uh, discussion here will go through a couple key points to taking effective minutes, our pro core templates, meeting minute etiquette and situations where formal or informal meeting minutes are required. Meeting minutes are the formal documentation or record keeping of key discussions and conversations that take place during meetings, whether in person or online, related to a project or a task that's taking place within the company. Meeting minutes can be formally processed through Procore or informally via email, again, depending on the meeting type. Minutes assign action items to parties involved in the project and set due dates for when those items are to be completed by the party required to take the action. Meeting minutes are used as a reference for future conversations or coordination and to solve disputes. In this case, meeting minutes can be considered important legal documents. So meeting minutes are a pretty important part of our day-to-day -day workflow. Um, in the moment, minutes can be thought of as a mundane task with minimal reward to what you're doing in that present time. Sometimes people can think of meeting minutes as being a waste of time because they have a lot of other tasks on their plate. But in actual fact, this may be true, but meeting minutes are one of the most powerful tools we have when it comes to keeping the parties involved accountable both in the present time of the project and in the future when having to reference back if a conflict arises. When navigating through disputes that can pose cost or schedule impacts to the company or the project, meeting minutes are a very important piece um, that we can result, result back to, resort back to if issues come up. Weeks, months, or years after a task has been completed at the job site, there are a few resources the project team has to resort back to. Meeting minutes are a formal piece of documentation that is agreed upon in the moment and show what happened or what should have happened when this conflict comes up. Effective meeting minutes concisely capture key topics with as few words as possible, with action items and due dates assigned to the parties involved. Meeting minutes are to record who attended the meeting or whose ball and court a task is in, what was discussed, when the meeting took place or when the action items are to be completed by, um, where the meeting took place, whether it was online or in person on site, and why coordination or additional action is required to complete each task. To provide clear and concise meeting minutes, it is important that discussion points are correctly categorized under each heading with numbers, not bullet points, and that action items are noted for review or update at subsequent meetings. All new or unrelated topics that are raised during the meeting must be noted either as a subtopic or a new business item at the end of the minutes. Numbering each subtopic instead of providing bullet points streamlines future reference to the minutes and removes the need to count through each item during the subsequent meetings, speeds up the meeting essentially. During each meeting, it is important to enforce organized speaking amongst the attendees. Attendees are only to speak on specific topics when those specific topics are brought up as a heading or a subheading on the agenda. And attendees are asked to speak in turn and not over top of each other. Ideally, meetings should not exceed one hour, as the focus of attendees is typically lost after this time frame. 
in the future, we'll have another retro use session on how to host effective meetings, but these are just a couple of quick points that I could touch on today. A good example of this um, ties back to Procore and our templates. Uh, Procore automatically includes minutes from previous meetings with the distribution of the current meetings minutes. Carryover subtopics should always be referred to at subsequent meetings to ensure that action items raised are being closed out effectively or address why they are not. When meeting minutes are taken effectively um, with an SI, submittal response, RFI response, or completion date of a task noted, it allows the meeting host to reflect back on those dates and ask why if they were not achieved. Asking this difficult question in front of the project team as a group pressures the party responsible to provide a response um, that's truthful and hopefully positive. When you're in that setting amongst your peers, uh, you're more likely to provide an answer that's truthful, <laughs> explaining why the item's not done, or questions come up that need to be answered to help support that person, provide the answer in the timely manner you need it to keep things moving on site. Here's an example from some meeting minutes basically to show where at a past meeting, the team requested that a site instruction be added by a certain date. And if it was not provided by that certain date, there may be schedule implications or disruption to the workflow on site. Through Precore, this is carried over to the next meeting. And again, the team brings it up that by August 22nd, or August 11th, depending on the item, this SI must be released to ensure the schedule is not impacted. At the time, this is something that may pass over quite quickly during the meeting, but in the future, as mentioned earlier, if there's an issue on site or if the project goes beyond the contract schedule date for completion, you can refer back to these minutes as a point in time where the team required information by a certain date and it wasn't provided, which ultimately led to the schedule and the duration of that task being extended. Moving on to meeting etiquette, um, to effectively convey the information discussed during meetings and enforce timelines. Meeting minutes should always be formally distributed, whether it's through Procore or email for an informal meeting, within 24 hours of when it took place. If a meeting took place on a Thursday afternoon or sometime on Friday, it's imperative that this information goes out by end of day Friday of that week to ensure that first thing Monday morning, when the consultants, the owner, the subtrades are back at work after their weekend, they have the information in their inbox or the action items and they get working on it right away. Another item to touch on here is keeping items open on the minutes until they're completed, which kind of goes back to the dates and the expectations we set for the people reviewing the minutes. Um, once a task has been completed through Procore and the item is marked as closed, it is no longer on the minutes and is removed from subsequent minutes. As long as an item is left open, it carries over to the next set of minutes and until it's completed, it will stay there. As an attendee of a meeting, there are responsibilities for you as well. Um, if you receive the minutes, you should take the time to review them and within 24 hours, provide comments on items that were included or that may have been missed. The distributor of the meeting minutes should also request that all attendees, not just those who read the minutes, um, take a look at the minutes and provide their feedback within 24 hours. This gives us greater power in the future when referencing back to these minutes if there's an issue to say, hey, you had opportunity to provide feedback on the minutes within 24 hours of when they were issued to say whether something was included or something was missed. If now a year later there's an issue and you're saying it was covered at the meeting but it's not in the minutes, the person that provided the minutes could say, well, you didn't you didn't provide that feedback within 24 hours, therefore it may not have happened and this is not a valid point to be talking about. 
Slide here. On to templates. When a project is formally created on Procore and a meeting is required, a meeting minute template is to be chosen from the drop down standardized ETRO agendas that we've put together. These templates have pre populated sections for the key discussion points shown by the examples on the screen, as well as sections for specific consultant related issues, architectural, structural, mechanical, electrical, so on and so forth. Typically, meeting minutes will cover items such as safety, schedule, RFI submittals, and or new business items. All items are to be discussed and documented in the order that they are shown on the agenda or on the minutes. Any items not included by a key section above are to be included as new business items. No matter the meeting type, minutes or a follow-up email are required to enforce and ensure that action items are being completed. This ensures that whether it's a formal or informal meeting, those in attendance are receiving the information that was discussed and following it. If they're not following it, it gives us an opportunity to go back to that distribution of meeting minutes or email to show that this duration was to be achieved by this time. And if it is not, you can ask why and hopefully get some further action from that party. For further information on meeting minute templates, please review the information included in the extra way where there's further discussion on the type of agendas we have and type of meetings we hold on a regular basis. Informal meetings. Oftentimes there are meetings that take place on site, which are unique. We don't have a template for it. They don't take place all the time, which therefore it's not as formal, but we still require minutes to go out by email to capture everything that was discussed. These could be for meetings such as one-off coordination meetings to talk about details, full planning sessions, or other meeting opportunities that take place on site. Informal, either as an email or a Word file, the topics and conversations reviewed during these meetings still need to be recorded for future reference by the project team. Following the same protocol as formal meeting minutes, the date the meeting took place, the attendees that were in attendance, dates, durations, and coordination discussed must all be included by minutes that are sent out after the meeting. Similar to the legal document aspect discussed above um, regarding our Procore minutes, this also can tie back to an email summary or minutes that went out after an informal meeting, provides Etro with the opportunity to ask why, if a duration wasn't met or if something wasn't provided when it was required. Such examples are why was a change order not approved, allowing us to proceed with additional scope when promised? If it wasn't provided when promised, this may have scheduled implications. The reason we note this is to ensure that all county, all parties are remaining accountable. Why was the site instruction CCN change directive not issued? Why was the detail discussed not explicitly followed on site? These are all example questions that can come up when an issue arises on site and you have minutes in your back pocket to look back on and get further action out of those that have uh, provided information required. Does anyone have any questions? Abdullah? I just want to um point out something that it's sometimes i find it really difficult to kind of pinpoint the action item and uh uh and the person who's just who's going to be responsible for it so do you have any tip on that yeah so the key with all points on meeting minutes um would be to assign a party starting with the consultant or the trade name but also naming the person responsible to per complete that action item. So if you have John Smith at A and B Architecture, you could say A and B Architecture JS is required to complete 
such and such a task by a certain date. So Ensuring you do this for all your topics gives you something to fall back on at the next meeting. Ensure they're completing things when they need to be completed. Or so that's, so that's within something. your minutes of meeting. That's within the minutes. It's not like in the pro core kind of um, responsible uh, person and uh, like required by dates, right? Within the minutes, yes. Okay. So yeah, in pro core, you can set a due date. I guess as part of the minute item, kind of part of the pro core interface there, but as well in the body, in the text of the minute itself, you should provide that responsibility date and item that needs to be completed. Gotcha, thanks. Yeah, especially when it's something that may need to go back and forth over a number of iterations. Like it's really important that you have the master date um, of the entire topic, and then all of those little steps in between uh, should be you know, a numbered list with, with the dates and assignees for each step. Yeah, no, I, I I totally agree. I find it I find it a bit easier, at least from from my point of view. I find it easier to add it to the minutes of meeting rather than specifying one date and one person in Procore. Like adding it in the minutes of meeting gives me the flexibility, for example, to follow up if I want or or at least track it. You know. Yeah. Absolutely, and something we could have added to the slides there, but. On Procore, if you create a meeting item, a certain like subsection for every single item you're going to talk about, the minutes can get extremely long. Um, keeping things a bit more general, how our templates have it with regards to architectural, structural items, submittals, RFIs, schedule, allows you to list out all those items one by one within the text and add your, your dates and your responsibilities for each item there keeps the minutes within a few pages rather than <laughs> 10 pages if you have big meetings and lots of people attending and keeps it concise and quick for people to look at. Yeah, thanks. One more tip to be efficient in your meetings. Don't have the person who's actually taking the meeting minutes share their screen. People get caught up in just watching them type. It slows down the meeting as they go because everybody's waiting for them to finish. Have somebody else, usually the chair of the meeting, share the minutes and have that person be able to just work alone on their laptop without being observed by everybody else. I'll, uh, I'll say thank you very much to Kyle and we'll make the recording available and share it with those who were not able to attend today.